Hi there, it's another devlog video. I'm gonna show you the progress that I made since last video, I think roughly a month ago. But before we do that, I wanna thank you for all the support. The video did very good number wise, but more importantly, it got so many cool responses. And also we gained quite a few members on Discord sharing their own games, like fellow game developers. It has been a very wholesome and cool experience so far. So thank you for that. If you look at the graph of subscribers, we've gained so many new people, mostly game developers. I can show you real quick. Oh. Uh. That that's for a friend of mine, that, that for Donny, the Monster Maze. We've gained like 400 subscribers from this video alone. So again, thank you. Um, this is going to be more like an improvised, non-scripted video, just a regular devlog for those who stuck around since the last video. I'm gonna promise you guys not to show you guys all the old stuff every single video. This is gonna be the very last time, I promise you. This is the 3D model that I made. Uh, I'm not going to throw it away. Might work on it later, who knows. Um, but after the Blender adventure, I decided to do the Brekkies video, the 16-bit uh, retro platformer in Godot. A very simple 2D prototype. It's actually insane how many people uh, Brekkies have has reached with this uh, tutorial. Like, it must be a crazy feeling knowing that you're responsible for so many new and upcoming game developers. And then I made this prototype, which is basically the perfect hybrid uh, between the old platformers and the newer ones. It looks very rough around the edges, but it did what it needed to do. It gave me the confidence and the motivational boost to proceed with this concept. And because the prototype doesn't really look good, obviously, by design, I also wanted to make a prototype in Photoshop just to figure out a possible game design direction, at least uh, in terms of the aesthetics. All right, so far, all the stuff that you probably have seen in the previous videos. Sorry again for the long intro. I, I won't show you old stuff from now on, I promise. Up until then, I was only following all those tutorials in very messy projects based on other people's assets and code. So I decided to go back to the basics. I figured out how basic things like physics and the coin collection worked. And again, I'm very happy with the camera. Makes it look way less clunky than the uh, default Godot setup. Whee! Good job! Now subscribe! <laughs> I actually forgot about that message near the end. It's in there because I want to make a tutorial video. It's going to be on my channel in about a couple of weeks. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Uh, it's basically a beginner's video with a step-by-step -step instruction to uh, come up with something like this. A 2.5 dimensional 3D platformer. Then I did some research on how to create water and how to use the 3D grid map uh, feature in Godot. And I came up with this prototype. It's very basic, but it uh, just does what it needed to do. Which is very satisfying because you learn one thing and then you implement one thing, one step at a time. And after that, I figured out how to uh, implement the edge detection. So you have this nice white border uh, around anything that touches the water, basically. You can also see that I added a fade in the water um, to make it merge better with the 2D backgrounds. I will show you more about that later in this video. I eventually went back to Blender to create those world blocks, by the way. I use these half blocks, full blocks, and corner and edge blocks um, for, the, for the grid map system in Godot, so you can easily create your maps. It might be a good idea to make a tutorial about that too. And then I had to uh, tackle the next challenge, and that was to blend the 2D parallax backgrounds with a 3D world. And in order to do that, I downloaded a bunch of clouds and some sky elements, and I made my own composition with a, uh, a sun that I created myself. I'm also a pixel artist now. <laughs> I added the clouds. I think I did some recoloring, added a C, and voila, our first 2D background. After creating the 2D background, days and days of grinding followed. I figured out how to combine the 2D assets with the 3D world and I optimized the uh, player movement and the sprites. You know what, I'm just going to show you guys the results so far. I will probably share a download link of this build on our Discord, so if you want to play this version yourself, make sure to join Discord. 3, 2, 1. There you go. The very first playable version of the game. I will go into all the details in a bit. Let me just walk from left to right. Oh yeah, Nick Cage. <laughs> I added Nick Cage yesterday as a joke. Um, he's gonna be the main villain for sure. 
No, I'm, I'm so happy uh, with the results so far, man. So proud. I added a water splash yesterday. Like, everything is still work in progress, and I'm not happy at all with the artwork. The little bushes don't look that good. The palm trees are not finished. The splash looks off. But even though most of these things are placeholder animations and sprites, it really looks promising, if you ask me. I'm having so much fun working on this prototype, man. What I really didn't like about the initial build is how you didn't really have to commit to your jump. You could just turn mid-air and go all over the place with a single jump. So the first thing that I did was make it so that you cannot turn around uh, mid-air. So when you jump, you have to somewhat commit to it. You can still try and go back. It's doable. But if you decide to do that too late, you will probably, yeah, you will fall into the water. I also added some uh, build-up in terms of the speed, like acceleration. You won't go to full speed immediately. And when I did that, I thought it would be cool to have this skidding animation, like this little dust particle when you slow down. And when I added the dust particle, I thought it would be cool that if you run, there's also be a little cloud behind you. <laughs> and then I thought it would be cool to have like this dust particle when you land. <laughs> and also when you jump. And these are all hand drawn. I'm very proud of it actually. And when you jump, I thought it would be cool if there were a bunch of those particles following you. So you have this trail. I wanted a frame-by-frame hand-drawn splash animation too. I also made it so that the game knows whether you're falling from a high distance and a, a very low distance, so you don't get the splash. I'm probably going to animate a small splash in the future, but only when you jump, it's gonna be a splash. And while I added the uh, edge detection in the water, uh, the water mesh itself and the shader is something that I downloaded from uh, the Godot Shaders website. I will put a link in the description below. As far as I know, it's open source and it's basically perfect for my game. So I tweaked the colors a bit, I tweaked the motion a bit and the roughness of the water and added the edge detection to it. So that's basically how I did it. I added a grid map with the uh, blender blocks in it and then a bunch of 2D sprites in a world with a water mesh on the floor. The water mesh has a fade, so it nicely mixes the uh, 2D background. And to add the background, I added a canvas layer right over here. And these have two layers. I can show you in the 2D view. Uh, it's basically a background and a middle ground. See, and now you can clearly see how um, the water has a slight fade and then the background has the same color. And I'm pretty sure that only these two code lines make it so that the middle background PNG uh, gets a slight animation based on the player position. If you play the game, you can see that the islands in the background, which are still placeholders, have a very slight movement to it. And maybe it's a bit too subtle now, but you, you get the picture. Let's say you add five here. It's probably going to move very fast. Yeah, see? This is way too fast, but that's something that I can always tweak along the way. Man, I really love how the character has to speed up and also slows down a couple of pixels with the little skidding effect. The dust. And everything is still a placeholder in terms of animation and graphics, but... It looks promising. And while recording this video, I'm amazed how much code I already wrote. It makes sense though, because you're adding one thing at a time. And before you know it, you have like 270 plus code lines. <laughs> really makes me sound like a show off, but like, I think the opposite is true. If I was really a good programmer, I think I would have only needed half of the code. <laughs> but you know, it gets the job done. I really had fun creating all the hand-drawn uh, dust effects. Like, as cool as all the particle systems are, I think nothing really beats the hand-drawn animations. And it should obviously fit your game, but there's some magic to it. It's like 100 degrees out here, so I'm going to wrap it up. Um, before I end the video, um, if there are any Godot developers watching, I'm very curious how you would have solved the uh, 2D and 3D hybrid in terms of the background. 
because I couldn't make it work uh, any other way than having the main node be a canvas layer, having a viewport with all the 3D stuff, and then a canvas layer behind it with the two sprites. So I'm literally blending a 2D and 3D scene in Godot. But if there is a smarter way, please let me know. Still learning. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, I hope it gave you some insight on how I went about mixing 2D and 3D. And while I am a beginner, I can imagine that some people would like the step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, if so, let me know in the comments below. I could always make a tutorial video. I am not 100% sure what I'm going to focus on uh, after recording this video, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be about the game loop. Um, I have to make the game fun to play, so... Yeah, I think I'm going to add my very first enemy and work on the combat system um, to make it engaging and fun. If you want to stay up to date, make sure to subscribe and like, and I see you guys around in the next devlog. Bye bye.